Welcome to Idaho Fishing Games Hook and Bulletin Podcast, your weekly news roundup of hunting, fishing, trapping, and conservation stories from around the gem state. Hosted by Fishing Games Public Information Specialist, Connor J. Lease. And welcome back everyone to Idaho Fishing Games Hook and Bulletin Podcast. Hope you all had a productive opening week for the mule deer season opener. This week on the Hook and Bulletin, we'll be talking about quagga mussels, the Valley Fire on the Boise River WMA, and upcoming wolf trapper courses. But first, yet another bad news headline thanks to this summer's wildfires. Fishing Game announced this week that several access yes parcels in Unit 32 will be closed to public access immediately in the wake of the paddock fire. The Willow Oxarango access yes parcels located on the west slopes of Squaw Butte were engulfed in the paddock fire and currently have almost no vegetative ground cover to provide wildlife habitat or help with soil stabilization and erosion control. These Willow Oxarango access yes parcels are typically open to public access from August 30th through June 15th. Because of the fire and to mitigate the potential for physical damage caused by human entry, our staff made the decision to temporarily unenroll these parcels from the Access Yes program through June 30th of 2025. Here's Peter Ott, landowner sportsman coordinator in the Southwest region. Quote, we're in a situation after the paddock fire where the lack of any vegetation on these parcels makes them particularly prone to soil erosion, and we're also concerned about potential road damage. For the sake of the private landowners who have their properties enrolled in this program, and for the hunters who benefit from these long-standing partnerships, we felt the risk of potential damage to these parcels was too high to leave them enrolled in the program this year. End quote. These parcels are in the process of being signed as closed, and our staff have removed them from the Access Yes property database on our website. It is anticipated that these parcels will reopen for public use on August 30th in 2025. Access Yes is a program designed to improve access to private land or through private land to public land by compensating willing landowners who provide access. For more information, reach out to our Southwest Regional Office, who should be able to answer any questions you might have. Next up, it's quagga mussels back in the news once again. Quagga mussels have once again been detected in the Snake River near Twin Falls. The new detections were a result of extensive proactive monitoring done by the Idaho State Department of Agriculture, the state agency responsible for invasive species monitoring and management. While ISDA detected fewer mussels in 2024 than in 2023, the second treatment to eradicate mussels is a critical step to stop further spread. ISDA began the 2024 chelated copper treatment on Tuesday, October 8, 2024. Using experience gained from the 2023 treatment, fish and game fisheries biologists are preparing for additional fish mortality throughout the treatment area, especially in the section of river upstream of the Twin Falls power plant that was not treated in 2023. Prior to the treatment, fish and game fisheries biologists have conducted pre-treatment surveys in the river upstream of the Twin Falls power plant to collect fish community composition and biological data within the reservoir section of the new treatment area. This data will also allow the department to determine the success of fisheries recovery efforts in the future. Similar pre-treatment surveys were conducted in 2023, both in and outside the treatment area of the Snake River. White sturgeon are not native upstream of Shoshone Falls and have not been previously stocked within the new treatment portion of the river. It is possible for white sturgeon to move downstream from other stocked locations, so white sturgeon mortality is possible but unlikely. Our staff are not expecting much additional white sturgeon mortality within the 2023 treatment section of the Snake River. It is assumed that white sturgeon mortality approached 100% during the 2023 chelated copper treatment. Since the 2023 treatment, no white sturgeon were released or translocated in the reach between Pillar Falls and Centennial Park, 
So biologists do not expect much, if any, additional white sturgeon mortalities associated with the 2024 treatment within the lower reach. If this story pertains to you, pick up the phone and call the Idaho State Department of Agriculture, the Fish and Game Magic Valley Regional Office, or check out Terry Thompson's press release on our website. Link in the description. All right, moving on to Teton County Bear News. A recent report of bears getting into unsecured garbage in a Teton County neighborhood serves as a reminder for residents to properly store attractants to prevent unwanted bear encounters. Bears become very active in the fall as they search for easy calories to fatten them up for the winter. This often drives bears to seek easy food rewards from carelessly or improperly stored attractants like garbage. For the safety of both the community and the bears, Fish and Game and the Teton County Sheriff's Office are asking residents to properly store their garbage and other attractants, making them inaccessible to bears. All of Teton County is bear country, and reports of bears getting into garbage occur every single year. Many of these incidents occur within Teton County's bear conflict zones, where the use of certified bear-resistant garbage containers and dumpsters that have passed the bear-resistant products testing program is required. Rural areas like Teton Valley are located on the urban wildland interface and sit right in the middle of grizzly and black bear habitat. Bears will often move through town looking for good smells and food. And unfortunately, they often find human food sources, such as garbage, pet food, or bird feeders, all of which are high in calories and readily available. That's when the problems start. Bears are extremely intelligent and can learn very quickly to associate people with food. The presence of unsecured human food sources like residential garbage, bird feeders, dog food, chicken coops, or even fruit trees cause human-bear conflicts that rarely end well for the bears, and often means a messy and likely unsafe situation for a property owner. Finding food inadvertently provided by people is bad for bears and people, and it often ends with a dead bear because when the animals find a regular food source in neighborhoods, they become less fearful of people. They can grow increasingly bold and aggressive in their search for food when their efforts result in a high calorie reward. The consistent promise of food can cause a bear to overcome its fear of people and result in an increasingly dangerous situation. When it becomes evident that a bear has become excessively habituated to that food source or has lost its weariness to people, biologists and conservation officers often have no choice but to trap and kill the bear. In cases like these, the habituated bears cannot be moved because research shows they will quickly travel long distances to seek out human foods in their new locations. Luckily, there are a lot of things that folks can do to prevent bears from becoming habituated, protecting both the residents in their neighborhood and the bears moving through it, such as removing bird feeders between April and mid-November. A few other good measures to keep in mind include feeding your pets indoors, getting a bear-resistant trash can and using it properly, and not keeping coolers, refrigerators, or freezers outside. Teton County residents can report bear problems to the Teton County Sheriff's Office at 208-776-8200 or call our Upper Snake Regional Office at 208-525-7290. For more on this story, check out James Brower's press release on our website, link below. All right, last up, Fish and Game enforcement personnel need your help tracking down a wildlife crime violator down in Bear Lake County. On September 30th, Idaho Fish and Game Senior Conservation Officer Colby White received a call from an archery hunter who had discovered four quarters of a harvested elk alongside a road near Geneva in Bear Lake County. Here's Colby. Someone went through a lot of work to get the meat all the way to the road just to let it rot. Some of the quarters were still in game bags. It's possible that the person made a mistake with meat care, especially with the unseasonably warm weather and they simply dumped the meat after they realized it had spoiled. Officer White investigated the report and confirmed that the quarters had been dumped on U.S. Forest Service Road 148 at the Dry Creek Motorized Trailhead near Dip Creek. Regardless of why the meat was discarded on the side of the road, it is considered waste of game, which is illegal. The responsibility of a hunter is to remove the required portions of meat from a game animal and then properly care for that meat to prevent spoilage. 
White said that if a hunter had accidentally wastes meat through improper care, he or she should contact Idaho Fish and Game to report it. If anyone has any information regarding this case or any wildlife violation, please contact Officer Colby White in Montpelier at 208-204-3921 or the Citizens Against Poaching hotline at 1-800-632-5999. Callers may remain anonymous and those with information leading to an arrest are eligible for rewards. And with that, it's time for the Rapid Fire Bulletin. Firefighting activities continue throughout the Boise Front segment of Boise River WMA as they work to extinguish the Valley Fire. For the safety of the public and the efficiency of firefighting crews, all roads and trails on the Boise Front segment of the Boise River WMA west of Highway 21 and north of Warm Springs Avenue are closed to all entry until further notice. This closure also extends to all travel off roads and trails. An instructor-led wolf trapper education course will be offered in Salmon on Saturday, November 2nd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Idaho Fishing Game office located at 99 Highway 93 North. Wolf trapper education courses are usually offered just a few times a year locally, so if you need to complete the course, sign up now. Idaho Fishing Game's Southwest region has several upcoming instructor-led certification courses, including one trapper education course and two wolf trapper education classes with plenty of open seating. Find a date that works for you and follow the links in Brian Pearson's press release to register for a class. With the irrigation season winding down and efforts to keep fish out of ditches, Local irrigators who divert water from rivers and streams in Idaho's salmon region are asked to call Idaho Fish and Game's fish screen program at 756-6022 several days before shutting off their water for the season. Fish and Game's anadromous screen program currently operates and maintains over 281 fish screens, which are critical to helping rebuild Idaho's salmon and steelhead runs. These efforts would not be possible without the support of local irrigators, landowners, and area communities. Okay, that's it for this week's stories. It's time for our question of the week. Hmm. This week's question was submitted by Kirk T. Kirk wrote, Quote, although it would be very rare if a solo hunter were to find two whitetail bucks with antlers hopelessly stuck together and they had a single valid whitetail tag, what would their options be in Idaho? Could you shoot one and then see if the other can get unstuck for some time frame? Could you take videos or photos and then shoot the second and apply for a salvage tag? This is a hypothetical, but we all know deer do get locked as stories come out every year across the USA. End quote. Yeah, man, that's a really interesting hypothetical. Uh, Here is what our enforcement folks had to say. Assuming the hunter had a valid hunting license and deer tag, they could shoot one of the deer and try to free the other. However, it would be recommended that they call Fish and Game to assist with this process for obvious safety reasons. The other buck could not be harvested except for if another hunter with a valid hunting license and tag was able to take it. Hope this helps. And that's all the news we have for this week. Thanks for putting an ear to Idaho Fishing Games, Hook, and Bulletin. If there's something on your mind or if you got questions related to Fishing Game Matters, feel free to drop us a line at podcast at idfg.idaho.gov. Again, that's podcast at idfg.idaho.gov. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>